Thank you all for staying through all of this. I appreciate it. I have uh, walked the walk, talked the talk, and kept the faith. Those are so trite sounding until you do that every year, year after year, in the Maine State Legislature. Tonight, you're seeing some of the candidates, very fine candidates before you, with a lot of similar views. When you leave here, you need to be thinking about who will be able to defeat Angus King and the Democrat in November. This is a two-step process. You have a good group of people to choose from. It's not a popularity contest. It's a confidence contest. It is so important to this state and to our nation. This seat could very well provide the majority in the U.S. Senate. So when you're looking at all of us, look again to see who will be the person most likely to win November 12th. No, that's June, June 12th. In November. My date's mixed up. I think I'm that person. I have been running campaigns since 1992. I have run and won all nine of them. Ten, if you count the leadership race, where my colleagues have been elected me as the assistant majority leader in the Maine State Senate. Number 10 should be June 12th. Number 11 should be in November. Because it's not just about picking the person who thinks of it like you because you have some choices. It's who can run that mile, who can flesh out what the other parties are talking about, and who can land in Washington to do just what we've, you've asked us to do tonight. In closing, my husband of 28 years is sitting in the back. We have three lovely children. We had five pregnancies. We cried over the two that we didn't, that didn't make it. But we love our children, and we love our grandchildren. Every one of them is a gift. And I have a job to make sure that the things pass to me and to you from the people in the 1800s, we get back to them and we pass it on to them. You have that duty. Your duty is to put somebody there to make sure that it happens. It now passes to you. I hope that you pray about it, think about it, and I hope that you will find that I am the person that can best do that for you in November this year. Thank you. As I said, I've been in this race for two years. I had the courage, I had the conviction to challenge a political giant in Senator Snow. When everybody said, you're crazy, you're never going to beat her. One of the things that you are going to have a choice with is knowing who the true conservative is. And you're going to hear that word spread around a lot. Used to be a game show called Tell the Truth. It was up to you to figure out who was telling the truth. Now I have no doubt that they have conservative values. Where was their conservative values and principles to stand up against a senator for years? But only got into this race after she dropped out. I want you to think about that. Americanism is being lost in this country. Patriotism is being lost. It is not being taught to our youth. 
and the next generation, they won't know about 30 seconds over Tokyo and who Jimmy Doolittle was, or even who the pilgrims were. It's not taught anymore in schools. It needs to be taught in homes. All problems can be solved when you sit at the dinner table and you talk to your children. I try to do that. I love my country. And I believe in a country where we have the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom of entrepreneurship. Freedom is not free. And it's rare. And if we don't fight for it, it will be a thing of the past. And our children will look in the history books that they're being given on false history. So please, pray about it. I know I'm doing this for the right reasons. And I appreciate your vote on June 12th. Thank you. Um, thank you again for uh, your attention tonight. I really appreciate the opportunity to come uh, here before you. There is one issue that I'd like to uh, bring up that didn't come up today, uh, tonight. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I, I particularly want to bring it up. And that's the issue uh, of gambling. Because uh, in this state, we have seen a pernicious, creeping uh, growth and expansion of gambling across our state. And I raise this because many people of faith have talked with me about this issue because of the corrosive impact it has on our communities, on individuals, on families. And um, this is a personal issue to me. And in, the, in the Maine legislature, in the House, in the Senate, I stood up against any expansion of gambling, whether it was the lottery, whether it was the casino in Washington County, whether it was uh, tribal gaming in, um, in Oxford County. And um, there, there was a, uh, as you will recall, a couple of years ago, there was an effort to get a, an Oxford County uh, casino built. And um, I just want to tell you that what you hear from me is the truth. And you may agree with me on some issues, you may disagree with me on some, but I will always tell you honestly where I stand. And one example of that is when all the, most all of the people in my community in Oxford who are feeling the pressure of a sagging economy and the destruction of the housing industry uh, were turning to an, the, the false choice of a gambling casino in Oxford. I stood up at the Oxford town meeting when almost everyone around me was opposed to my point of view and I told why I thought this was the wrong choice for the people of Maine. It wasn't popular. I uh, suffered in my community. My property was vandalized, but I spoke out, and um, we lost that. This is an important issue as far as I'm concerned, and, and I think it, it, I, I ask you to, to think about the, the great array of issues that we're all facing in, in this challenging time we live in. Um, I would very much appreciate your consideration on the election on June 12th, because I believe that I am the strongest candidate to defeat Angus King in November. And that is the critical question here. We may disagree on some issues, and I know many of those issues are important to people, and everybody has to make their choice. But in my view, we need to defeat Angus King, and I'm the strongest candidate to do that. Please give that your consideration. Thank you very much. Every day I talk to my son, who's 21 and, and now in school in Boston. And now and again he says, Dad, you've got a really tough job being state treasurer. How are you doing? And I said, Sam, this is the easiest job I've ever had. All you do is tell the truth and do what's right. This is a piece of molding from a Main State Housing Authority project in Waterville. It's the old junior high school in Waterville, where I went to school, my dad taught school. Because of the rules that we are now changing, this piece of molding had to be replaced exactly the way it was 80 or 90 years ago. Even though it's going to be painted, this happens to be a piece of white oak, one of the most expensive pieces of material, finishing wood you can buy. 
So instead of having pine that you can paint in all kinds of other ways to drive down, thank you, Pastor, <laughs> the price of housing, those 34 low income apartments cost all of us $292,000 each. Now this is when we have about 6,500 families in homeless shelters or on waiting lists to get into low income apartments. I have a track record. I'm the only candidate who's a conservative, a true conservative, with a track record of fiscal reform. We have one heck of a governor. And when Paula Page beat me in the gubernatorial primary, I didn't scatter. The next day, I called him up and asked him, how can I help you win? And I've been working with him ever since. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. We need someone, finally, who thinks like us, who is conservative, who will do the right thing, who's not a career politician, and who can wither the criticism. Because this race could very well determine the balance of power in Washington. I'm asking for your vote on June 12th. As your state treasurer, I have done exactly what I told you I would do. If I have an opportunity to go down to Washington, I will do exactly what I told you I have done tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Can we uh, just thank the candidates for taking the time to be here with us?